the board speed. Okay, you've got it now. Lauren's first ride in a small airplane results in the happiest takeoff ever and some gnarly adventures in the SFO Bravo airspace. Do you see a triple seven down there climbing? No. no. Off the runway? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's coming right at us. I don't see, oh my god, yeah. My trip last summer to San Francisco was a new benchmark for the Flight Chops project. We'd finally reached a stage where we could mount a proper production trip and produce television quality content that I as a pilot would want to see. I work in film, but funneling real resources into a side project like this was not realistic until now. It was launching a Patreon campaign that changed everything. It allows fans to directly contribute to the project. And with so many people willing to pay for something they knew they could get for free, it wasn't hard to convince some amazing sponsors to come on board. We now have the resources to regularly produce stuff like this awesomeness we shot last week. This is probably the coolest thing I've done today. Think so? I think it might be, yeah. Flight Chops Formation Tower reporting inbound, watch for traffic, dash 8, departing runway 30, will be turning northbound. Flight Chops Formation, we'll be looking out. But even with major industry sponsors, the Patreon campaign is still responsible for a large part of our budgets. So while I was planning my trip to the Bay Area, I got in touch with Patreon and they invited me to visit their office. Heather took us on a tour and showed us around the place. Not only are we bringing opportunity to the creative class, um, but we're doing it with a ton of love and a ton of passion, and that's indicative of the Patreon spirit. Play chops! Do it! <laughs> <laughs> to mark my visit, the office had a raffle. The winner would get a flying tour of San Francisco with myself and Jason Miller. The lucky winner was Lauren. Oh, uh, look, you brought your parachute, right? Because <laughs> that was supposed to be... Like a logo. <laughs> Everybody has been super jealous all day. They had a backup just in case I got sick, so she's been asking me all morning if I was feeling sick at all. I didn't know what kind of airplane it was going to be, but um, getting into it was easy. I felt comfortable in there. I love flying, so I'm not, I'm not a nervous flyer at all. I was just excited, but not nervous. And I was excited too because flying the Bay Tour with an awesome instructor like Jason was going to be a great experience. This airspace is Class Bravo, and it's no joke around San Francisco International. Clear for it. San Carlos Ground, Skyhawk 4580, Papa's at San Carlos Flight Center with India. Request taxi runway 30, uh, Bay Meadows, NorCal 280, transition through Bravo. I was glad to have Jason as pilot in command so I could both learn and enjoy this flight. 458 Papa Squawk 0377, NorCal departure 135.1. Okay, uh, 0377 and 135.1 for 458 Papa. 458 Papa, read back, correct. All right. I can see how that would be intimidating for a new VFR guy. That sounds like an IFR clearance. Yeah, they uh, they give us a transponder code because they've phoned ahead to approach control, uh, telling them what we want. And what we're going to want is a class Bravo clearance, which you know you always hear about as a student pilot, you never quite get to do. Um, but it's really the same as a Charlie transition. It's just that you've heard the words, you're cleared into the class Bravo. Right. So if you've got experience with Charlie or can get experience with Charlie, you're really practicing Bravo uh, effectively. I have no idea what they're talking about. For Lauren, it'd be a chance to see her adopted home from the air. And her pure, genuine excitement really reminded me why most of us get into flying in the first place. So we're expecting it to be a little sluggish. Yep, we're the front. it's sluggish. And we got a forward you speed. You got your abort speed. So you've got it now. The takeoff was so much fun. Like the lift in the stomach, like I wasn't expecting it to be that much fun. Taking off, like I, I think I literally smiled and like gasped for air because it felt really, I don't know, different than flying on a commercial plane. You guys okay back there? Okay, we're more three miles. You guys good? Yeah, we're good. Look how blue the water is. Look at that jet landing. Can you see that? It's an A380. Yeah, that's awesome. This looks like it's going so slow. I know. It's hovering. Having someone like Lauren on board, a first-time passenger in a small plane, really brought out the nerdy airplane kid in both Jason and I. It was refreshing to share that feeling of being in a small plane for the first time. Pretty cool that you get to fly right over the International. Yeah, man, that's cool. But we had to balance indulging in that fun with also managing a logistically complicated flight. So let's rewind back to how we got into the Bravo airspace. Test 458 Papa, remain outside of class Bravo airspace. Contact NorCal approach 135.1. 
NorCal 135.1, we'll stay clear, Bravo, thanks, 458 Sierra, Bravo. Now here's where we're going to call NorCal and get the actual class Bravo clearance. Uh, NorCal, Skyhawk 458 Sierra, Papa's 2300, climbing 3500, request class Bravo clearance, uh, Bay Tour. Uh, 458 Sierra Papa, North Cap Road Charger, includes class Bravo at 3500, remain west of the Bay Shore Freeway. Okay, roger that, west of the Bay Shore, into the Bravo uh, at 3500, 458 Sierra Papa. Cool, you can go ahead and turn north to keep that highway off your left, that's 280. Right. And we're going up to 3500, there was your class Bravo clearance. Uh, 3 Alpha Tango, do you have the uh, 280 freeway in sight? Uh, 3 Alpha Tango. Cool. 3 Alpha Tango, roger, can you just yeah. uh, hit for 280 freeway uh, southwest of San Francisco? Go. I do have traffic and northwest bound along the 101, also at 3500 Cessna. Yeah, he wants you to go a little closer to 101, so just head, toward, head directly toward SFO for a minute. Roger, thanks. He I, wants us, was, I, I know, I was fudging it a little bit, but uh, now there's a guy coming the other way, so we should stay a little closer to the other freeway. He gave us this whole range. Roger. There you so go. am I looking for traffic coming that way? You're looking good. You're flying the right way now. And then, then uh, yeah, here comes 35. You guys cool back there? No, oh, cool. All right. <laughs> and this month we've got our biggest prize yet. It's a $4,000 total prize with that ridiculously awesome watch from Shaden. Please visit flightshops.com for a chance to win it. Anyway, during this brief moment with no radio chatter, Jason shared some insights about flying the airplane at max gross weight. That was no problem with four people. I think just leapt off the ground. One of the things that I find hard with passengers is to know where the trim settings should be. Because you can't do it by the book because it's going to be feeling different. Right. You can look if you've got the right CG. If, you, if you're not using a loading envelope, like a moment envelope, if you're figuring out where the CG is, yeah. you know, 45 inches after datum or 37 inches after datum, you can kind of plot it and see where it is on your range. And then Jason got interrupted by ATC. But what Jason was trying to say was that if you use this graph with a visual representation of your CG, you can better anticipate where your trim would likely need to be for takeoff. You just don't want to be surprised. In any case, I was surprised that time that the plane, I was expecting to have to rotate more. And that's kind of like what you try to avoid with passengers being right. surprised. I found my experience with flying with passengers is usually heavy in the back because I'm light. Right. And it, it tends to want to rotate on its own. Cause it's like back. it did, right? So you could maybe look, you know, put a little more forward trim in or whatever. I should have done that this time. Here, Papa. Where is traffic departing uh, shortly be right. northeast on off 2-8. Uh, flight heading at 2 Zero. Okay, 280 for traffic off San Francisco, 458 Sierra Papa. That's how you want it anyway, right? Yeah. Now, one thing that comes into play a lot in San Francisco, which is a great way to remember the rule about Bravo, do you remember cloud clearance and Bravo where you just have to stay clear of clouds? It's really common that we've got a little fog layer like this, right? Right. And now he wants us to go this way because of a jet taking off San Francisco. And what he what he does not want you to do is Hey, here, Papa. Are you familiar with the Sutra antenna site? Just uh, about your uh, 2 o'clock now and uh, 4 miles. Uh, which site is that, sir? Uh, Sutra antenna site. Oh, yeah, Sutra antenna. Yes, sir. Hey, it's here, Papa. Roger. Just pass west of that. Uh, Wilco, west of Sutro, uh, 458 Sierra Papa. The last thing he wants us to do is some weird maneuvering to stay clear of clouds. Here, Papa, there's traffic at your 1 o'clock now and uh, 4 miles southbound at 3,500 Cessna. Uh, we're looking, 458 Sierra Papa. Hey, Papa, just start that right turn towards the Sutra antenna site. Uh, we'll go right turn now, 458 Sierra Papa. To clarify what Jason was trying to say between ATC interruptions, in Class Bravo it's important to hold your heading and stay predictable. Don't worry about exact distances regarding cloud clearance, just stay clear and let ATC know if you need to make a turn. Three Alpha Tango traffic, uh, 10 o'clock now and three miles turning uh, north uh, westbound, 3,500. Now this is kind of crazy because that jet is traffic. gonna take off right Tango. under us. Right. Like, any second. He's rolling now, but he'll never climb this high. Three Alpha Tango. He's going three Alpha Tango right right It's hard to believe this flight was happening because of Patreon and their enthusiastic encouragement and help. Specifically, an intern named Matt Herrero, who's since moved on, and this guy, Anthony is one of the original five team members. I wasn't sure I could push my channel to the next level, but Anthony and his team made sure it happened. So you've been with Patreon like right from the beginning, I think, because I remember seeing right when I was doing my research, you guys did that fun like music video, and you were like one of five. My homies call me Tony. Got a video? Show me. Got a question? Then email this sexy pony. Yeah, yeah, we did the, uh, it was like our first Patreon welcome video. Just introducing the team. Founder Jack Conte and his four trusted allies have since grown the company to over 70 people and a huge number of fans and artists. There's over 300,000 patrons supporting the creator, so it's, it's just an amazing community. 
The whole building was filled with enthusiastic people who are all working hard so someone like me can produce content for you. What's cool with Patreon is that you don't need to be a mainstream content creator to succeed, and even a niche project has a chance to stand out. Anthony told me I was the first person to shoot a pitch video from an airplane. If somebody asks me, hey, can you circle my house or anything like that, I always find that if you know how to ask air traffic control for what you want, they're more than happy to help you. So, like, I mean, even Oakland Tower in the past has let me circle a house on short final to a runway. As long as I'm clear with them, I say, look, I have a passenger on board. They're asking if we can circle for a photo of their house. You know, can you guys help us with that or whatever? Um, air traffic control is usually willing to comply. Um, yeah, my experience with that is think about what you want to say before you key the mic. Right. And, and if you think of 12 words to say it, think of a way to say it in eight. Right. And then do it. And, yeah. and don't be, and if you do it concisely and efficiently and don't, and acknowledge what they're doing. Like if they're busy and stuff, don't try to fit in the middle of a conversation. Make it very sure they're done. Ask your request and know that they're going to need a minute to think about it and then answer it. And I've had the same experience in Toronto. It's quite a busy city, but I've almost never been refused to a request. Uh, Do you see a triple seven down there climbing? No. no. Off the runway? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's coming right at us. I don't see. Oh my God, yeah. Well, so what should I do? Can I get out of his way? That was funny. He was. Sta we're good now. He was static, perfectly static. Yeah. Do you coming. see that? I see it now. Yeah, they they, uh, they trust us because they definitely cut that one a little close. Yes, they did. United 707, you're above the Cessna. We're heading 170, Frederick Spiegel, when That's able. That's epic. When able, that was a classic case of the worst scenario when an airplane is coming right at you with a direct heading like vector. Exactly. It doesn't change in the horizon or in the background, right? Right. So I didn't see it at all. Nor did I. And, and, we're both and then looking. all of a sudden, its landing light lit up when it really was pointing right at us. Right. And that was when I saw it. And then it was static, this like slicing wings with a fuselage dot and a landing Light. Right, and that was a triple seven. What if it was like a Piper Archer? You know? Right. You might find enjoy the view for a bit. No, go for it. Never gets a fly. Yeah. The highlights for me were seeing the Golden Gate Bridge for sure, and just seeing like the whole bay, seeing all the cars looking so small, and the pedestrians also walking on the bridge was really fun to see. My impressions of general aviation, having no experience, were. It's a lot about airspace, it seems to be. Like, I learned that in my short flight um, over San Francisco. There's a lot of clearing the airspace and watching out for other people's paths. So that was interesting to see and learn about. You have to have a really good relationship with the people who are telling you where to go. So I, that was my little takeaway. I couldn't have put it better myself. So thanks to Lauren for being a good sport and coming along for this ride. And thanks to the supporters on Patreon for making this possible. Seriously, each episode is getting better and better and it's directly because of the support. I was happy to make this episode to be able to show you guys what happens behind the scenes. And thanks to the sponsors, we've got Aviation's greatest monthly contest. Last month, Jerry won all this stuff plus a Bose A20 headset. This month, Shaden has given us the featured prize, which is the True Aviator Steam Gauge Watch. This is ridiculous. This thing's worth three grand alone. So I really want to see one of you guys win it, along with all the stuff from the other sponsors. Visit flightchops.com to win, and keep your flight chops sharp. Clear prop. Clear prop.